Savage Whale. Your regular fix for movies and mayhem. Episode 39. Now that's how you're supposed to drive. From now on, that's how you drive. <laughs> Name the film, guys. American Gangster. That was uh, my new vinyl, Jackie Brown. Um, which is incredible soul music. So today is is actually a different different schedule of people. It's myself, it's Drew, and it's uh, Teddy Montgomery. Well, we no, have to bear yeah. with James, basically. So yeah, it's not my name. What's your name, Teddy? Huh? What's your name, Teddy? Do you go down to the woods? M Night Teddy Bear. Do you shit in the woods? Do you shit in the woods? Occasionally. The, while, while you're down there, have you ever seen the Pope doing a shit in the I was... woods? <laughs> no, but I was down there the other day and I needed one and there was a rabbit nearby. And I was like, do you have problems with shit sticking to your fur? And the rabbit was like, no, why? So I wiped my ass with the rabbit. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I absolutely uh, yeah, knew that was coming. I knew that was coming too, but I was, that was too good for us to spoil. You know, I could have put a voice on, but <laughs> yeah. I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed. Some effort. That was good. Do you know what I found before we get properly Isn't into that your it? show and tell then, James? That you putting your hand up a bear's ass. That's just bear. It's not oh. a puppet, it's just a bear. It's one of Reef's bears. It just sits up on my uh, on my shelf. Oh. I tell oh, you what, this is show and tell now though. Back to school with Rage Whale. Here's show and tell. Why? Oh, no oh my god, look at it. It still looks really nice, though, to be fair. Yeah, this is the safe DVD for people listening who can't see. Um, I found an old DVD from 2004, and it's starring Kevin Scullion and Andrew Yourself? Horner, um, directed by Adam Russell, called Safe, film we made. It was our production company, Sinister Dexter Productions. Yeah. Here's the tagline. Safe. It can't be that fucking safe. <laughs> Two gangsters, one brain cell. Slight problem. Brilliant. Should I mean, get it um HDR. Get it like converted up. Uh, got proper That's a good shot. Do the remake. Hey, look. It's it's sexy, man. That's it's a vintage. It's quality, man. It's it's a relic. It, right. I'll read the back. It's like it's like two, three sentences, right? Um, and I was in the film, and this in this this uh, this description makes no sense to me, and it makes no sense at all. In the sounds like you're in Inception. It goes, "Welcome to the dirty world of safe, where loyalty is sharing your last bullet." Enter Ad and Ray, a hapless gangster duo thrown into the middle of thieves, murderers, violence, and minor TV stars. Ray is supposed to be marrying his boss's niece in the morning. First, he has to survive the hardest six hours of his life. Can he survive the next six minutes? Six minutes, not six Sex minutes. Six minutes? That's a different kind of film. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Durex like, advert. Make sure I'm you're safe. Sure Adam Russell wrote this because the last sentence is, director Adam Russell does a superb job <laughs> At directing a fantastic cast in this action-packed gangster thriller. Mate. Uh, all the uh, design by Screwball Designs, which is Paul Dillon. Hey! Shout out to Paul Dillon. Chrome my, Dome. A few of my mates when I was at drama school, they really enjoyed it, though. They're like, guy, they're like, safe is a cult film. Like, it's got no budget, like, but it's it's got some really funny moments. <clears throat> Let's be clear, it's awful. It's dark, though. But... It's in better, you can't see it. It's better than Room. Room. Oh, yeah. It takes a massive, massive shit on the room. 
Yeah. Um, it covers the room in shit. Well, awesome not shit. just some topical, by the way, talking about something completely different. Good news in the search for uh, that Jay Slater. You've seen that on the news? Oh, is that the 19-year-old? Yeah, he's gone missing in Tenerife. Yeah. Apparently, um, Philip Schofield's been deployed because the uh, dogs were having trouble sniffing out a teenager. Wow. <laughs> See, I'd have a problem with that normally, but there's been new stuff in the news about him violently bullying and attacking another child. Him and yeah, if what I've read is true, I he's, hope um, he's, he's getting him. his carpets. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go that far. I would, no one wants no one wants anyone to die, but or, or be hurt. But I, I don't think he's a nice kid. Yeah, don't make yeah make don't play with fire if you want to get burnt at the end of the day. So the police are looking into. But that might not be true, but it has been on several several news things. I can't help but feel it would be disproven quite quickly. Yeah, again, this is hearsay. None of well, us. Well, it's been are in the news, like expert. actual news things. So I don't think yeah. they're allowed just to print like gossip or such like that. I'm pretty sure they are because they do it all the fucking time. Yeah, could, but to it say could that be a little bit well, not okay, quite as bad as America, but still. To, to be fair, to for them to point out and name all the other gang members and give what they were sentenced, it seems like a pretty legit story. Yeah, I mean that's not to take away. We don't want anything bad happening to the kid. No. He is a kid after all, and he's got plenty of time to. We were dickheads then. I don't. I didn't do bad stuff like that, but he can improve and be a better person. I like that, Kev. I like that. Kev's thought of the day. You can turn your life around. Oh, 100%. Well, maybe not in his case. <laughs> well, yeah. But um, if the rumours are false, then it's obviously a very, very sad story. And yeah. ma- massively unlikely they're going to find him. Yeah. I mean, I was just going to say, like, to the people listening to us, is that we apologise for not um, for missing a week. We missed a week last week of recording. That was my fault. I think we're all a well, little... it wasn't you. We were all it. sick, dude. We were all sick. Yeah, no, it was 100% Kev. But I, I was bad. I was bad. I, I've spent uh, 12 days. Basically, I've had like two meals in 12 days. Well, you sound like Joseph Fritzl's daughter. Did you have real diarrhea then, without going too graphic? I had zero diarrhea. I didn't eat oh, okay. anything to be able to give me diarrhea. Oh. I had one poo. That so wasn't one... like a Jackson Pollock in your toilet. No, I had one poo in one week. One poo um, in one week. I have got two more bits to share just before we carry on. One is is yes. about um, Scotland, actually, Kev, unfortunately. And, oh, yeah, what was the score last night? I'm well, as sad oh. as it is, Scotland have been knocked out of the Euros. There is a saving grace for any Scottish fans listening that went out and bought a shirt. Chances are you're still within your 14-day return period on that. <laughs> and we're also going to run a poll, um, which I think might be good on a chat. Um, on what we think is going to come home first. The football, Jay Slater, Madeleine McCann, or Shamina... Well, football isn't coming home, is it? England aren't exactly doing well. James, you're on fire today, man. You're on fire. You're in your own comedy store. I think James <coughs> has um, got Reef on the phone. He's had to He's had to go on Ah, home. fair, fair, fair. So, um, James is on his phone call to his fair. five-year-old Do son you... right now, just saying goodnight to him. Do you think it was? Do what? you think it was the hummus that made you ill? The hummus. Yeah. What are you on about? I saw you. I saw you making the the hummus sandwich in the wraps. Well, yeah, that, I've had more stuff in me than that. That's no, I just I, I know that that was the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it I, sounded really dodgy. <laughs> I, I went I went to a gig on the Saturday in Manchester. And then Tuesday, I wasn't feeling great. Wednesday, I was really rough the day after we did the record. And then Wednesday night, I was throwing up. Um, I was really violently ill. And then for the next four days, I was ill and knackered and headache. There was a lot of often just went nasty, street, so. nasty stuff going around. Because ironically, yeah. that episode 37, which is called medicated and off topic or something, yeah, we came out today. We're all we're pretty unwell in in that. Do you know what I mean? So it was almost like it it was the it the was beginning coming. of yeah the beginning of what was to come in a way. So yeah, but I feel a lot better now. I've had some meals. My appetite's back a little bit. That's good, dude. Uh, you look you look good almost, though, man. You got a good color in your face, like it, so. It, honestly, it was almost two weeks of like I had like a, an apple 
one day, a soup the other, the next day, an apple and a half a soup the next day. I couldn't even I couldn't even finish a whole soup. There's like nothing so, to it. So you just couldn't. It was like almost like a like a virus bug where you can't keep it down. It's just constantly. Yeah, on 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 that. That's all I had for four or five days was two Oof. soups, well, one and a half soups and two apples for five days, and on a Monday I started throwing up again. I just felt horrendous, and it got to the point where I'm like. I haven't eaten for five days, really. I need to call the doctor, and I went that day. And he checked my throat, said my throat's fine, checked my lungs, they're fine, my stomach pressed on it, no pain. He's yeah. like, there's nothing technically bad, so there's nothing yeah. behind the scenes. It's just a viral infection. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like extreme and you just got to kind of get through it, like literally. like yeah. yeah, I thought it might be a flu or something. I, I, was, taking I, I was taking ibuprofen, which isn't good for empty stomachs. I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah, because so it can eat away at the... Yeah. Going straight to paracetamol. So... Oh, dude. Yeah. But all good now. It's James weird, because when you were saying apples and soup, that just made me think of Christian Bale's diet when he did The Machinist. He was like, I had an apple a day or something. I wish I looked like The Machinist. I didn't lose any weight. All right. <laughs> wish I did. Sorry to interrupt the show. Just a reminder to say we love and appreciate you all for listening to the podcast, whether it's on Spotify, Apple or Amazon. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, follow, as this really helps us continue to progress and improve the content and keeps us making these fun episodes for you guys. Oh, we're also on these things called Instagram and TikTok. You can follow us there too, as we share short, funny reels on the reg that you can share with friends if you like. Now, back to the mayhem. Um, was Maybe it's say? half an yeah. apple then. So yeah, that's us just saying, sorry for last week, we're missing a couple of episodes, but the last two weeks, you've had three episodes a week on the bounce. Yeah, so you, were lucky spoiled. Bastards. you were spoiled. So technically, those two bonus episodes are the equivalent of the week we missed. So yeah, we over-delivered. We so over-delivered. Yeah, not lost any duration. Um, well, should we bring up... Oh, who saw Weird, Weird Al? Yeah. That, did, you, did you... Right, so me and Drew saw Weird Al Yankovic. Not the man, the, the, the film with... Um, <laughs> he was just hanging out, yeah. What's his name? What's the actor? Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe. Um, which I... Well, what did you think of it first? I... It was funny because at first, it did, did you see Rocket Man? Yeah, yeah, I've seen all the at, biopics. At, mate, at first, you, it you actually me... know Weird Al Yankovic, anyways, is material. It, yeah, but it, 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 no, no, until oh. Sarah started showing me some of his YouTube stuff, which was mind blowing. But I honestly thought it was almost like a a biopic, like a day in the life of, <laughs> as it started. If you um, believed any part of that film. No, come on, just 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 the intro because the intro reminded me of Rocket Man. I think anybody out there, I want to know if they agree. The beginning of Weird Al reminds me of Rocket Man. Isn't that the... where he's making up Bologna? My Bologna. No, no, no. no. It's, it's just the abuse that he goes through with the family. Like it's it's horrendous. Like the way that his dad treats him. The, yeah. the I don't think he's know... abused in real life at all. Oh, okay. So it's just to make it he came from a wealthy Jewish family. I think. Wow. Okay. So it's just to make a it loving family dramatic. I Everything thought it was weird when the guy, yeah. like, a wealthy comes... Jewish family seems unlikely. I think when he comes to the door with the, um, I can't remember what the one instrument is. One of those rare is. ones, James. What? Huh? One of those rare ones, James. Yeah. What's that? Um, I look like some rude boy trying to slap somebody's ass. But what's accordion. one of those instruments where you squeeze the accordion? What? Accordion. When the guy turns up with the accordion, and then he get the dad just absolutely. Go beats the living daylights out of him. It, it, it's so darkly comic, like it's like. And it's funny when of... it, you get to the end, and it's just like, well, yeah. I was playing the accordion, and I wasn't good enough, and I didn't want you to go through that, son. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> but all of the, um, the yeah, of all the houses that guy could have knocked on, it's like that was the worst place to drop off an accordion. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I I thought I thought it was really funny. I I, I, I love was... the fact that you think and... a lot of it was real, even it, not not real, but. Based well, on come on, I thought I thought George Clooney was a real doctor, you know, in ER. I thought it was a documentary. So, I mean, that's Good people, people know, people know, like, I can't sustain my disbelief. Um, 
but yeah, it was it was um, I, I was entertained all the way through. Like it just kept getting wilder and funnier and more ridiculous. Like that bit of the party with when he meets one of the guys from Queen, who's the dude from The Devil in the Night or whatever. Uh, uh, late night with the devil. Late night with the devil. Devil in the late night. Uh, yeah, late night with the devil. Um, and then he does um, a rendition of oh fuck. Yeah, the Queen song. Something on the bus. And you got and you got Jack Black there as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's so funny. I'm just trying to remember the the really famous Queen song now. Oh, they they only had a couple. So. I love rock and roll. It's not Queen. That is not. Yeah, no, it's not that, is it? I can't remember the song now either. It was good you both pay attention anyway. <laughs> it's it was a good film. I don't think it was great. I think I was underwhelmed, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, well, it's it was telling... cop out again. It was That's silly third, enough. Third of July. It was silly enough to keep me entertained. But it's not exactly something like, dude, you have to watch this. It's not something like that. It wasn't, yeah. If, if you like Weird Al, you'll, you will like it because it is playing the whole part. So obviously the point of Weird Al is that he does parodies of famous songs. Yeah. This film is a parody of his life. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. He's taking the piss out of his own life and stretching the truth to an extreme level. So the yeah, fact he that has a, he has a hell of a lot of fun. Like, he's like 6'2", he's massive. So yeah. who is he going to employ to play him in a film? The shortest actor he can find, who is ripped. <laughs> and he ends up becoming lovers with uh, Madonna, who he it's met brilliant. only once for five minutes yeah. but he end, in real life. But in the film, he ends up being lovers and she kills... No, they kill... What's his name? Who's that drug lord oh, guy? Oh, man, I know, I know. James knows. What's the big drug lord guy? Famous drug lord. Castro? No. Castro. Um, no, it's not Castro. It's, it's not um, Castro. Um, Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar. Escobar. Yeah. yeah, they kill Escobar with like a gold Uzi, and then Madonna takes over his empire. <laughs> but it's worse than that. It's worse than that. They kill him on his birthday, so it's even nastier. Do you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. And, and you've got Dwight from The Office in a top hat, naked in a in his uh, jacuzzi bathtub all the time, chatting. Oh to him. god, yeah, that's awkward. That bit, yeah, that's really awkward yeah. stuff. It's um, um, it was good. The fight but... sequence, the fight sequence in the um in the diner is really funny. Yeah, I, James, I think you'd enjoy it. It's on Prime. It's free. Weirdo Yankovic. It's just him taking the piss out of himself for an hour and a half. It's not. It's nice, simple comedy. It's nice. Um, but you I'm see... really in my horror kick at the moment. You've been in your horror kick for a long time, but go into... Really, the... really want to see flipping... Don't say that violent nature. <laughs> Fuck sake. Can we get through one podcast without saying that film? No, I might start the Hellraiser films soon. <laughs> Until it's available to watch. Let's never mention it again. Can, can we say not Poughkeepsie Tapes is on Prime we now? Don't mention that again. Is that on Prime, is it? Prime's got the Poughkeepsie Tapes, yeah. How the fuck do you spell that again? P-O-U-G-H. It's meant to be. It's like a found footage film. But it's pretty sketchy. Uh, no, so it's, it's seven day trial of MGM plus four hundred forty nine a month. So it's not on Prime technically. Mine just says play movie. You Maybe might... I subscribe. Oh, I've actually subscribed to MGM plus at some point. I didn't realize that. Free trial at the moment. MGM plus is actually amazing. I mean, just the first films it's got advertised: The Strangers, Silence of the Lambs, Misery. Amityville Horror, The Saws, obviously, Usual Suspects, greatest film of all time. Wait, wait, come on. Hey, you're, just, you're doing your best hits. You're doing your greatest hits, James. What that's just what's on the app. Look, if you what's click on it, that's the first things that come up. Yeah, but dude, that's cookies, films. man. They know you. They either read, the, they either watch the podcast or they know you well. No, they just, that's, they just show what's the best films on their app, don't they? Okay, fair enough. Because now Prime is apps inside of apps, isn't it? I need an app for my app. Cookies. Yeah, because I have the Shudder app, the Shudder subscription as well. And of you Paramount. Because it's the horror thing, isn't it? The Shudder. Yeah, and Paramount for Yellowstone. Best show. Oh, yeah. Taylor Sheridan, man, wrote that. I reckon that might be on par with Game of Thrones. Bold statement. Ooh, that is bold. The only reason Game of Thrones gets more points because they had to make all of the stuff, whereas in Yellowstone, you could just buy all their 
props from a shop, essentially. Like, you can go and buy jeans and a thingy, but go at Game of Thrones, everything must have been handmade. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they get bonus points for that. Yeah, absolutely. But they also lose points being the worst ending to any show in the history of pe- like people. <laughs> go, going to films, right? I watched, I actually paid for a film the other day just because I was bored. And was not, it a naughty one in a hotel? Well, <laughs> I've been on Manual in space. Nope. Uh, I mean, there was potentially naughty scenes, but not quite. Um, I paid for Immaculate with Sydney Sweeney, the nun one. Yeah. It's on Prime. It was It's 15 quid, and it was like they do discounts every now and again. It's like four quid for the next Ooh, few oh. days. So I was like, ah, balls to it. I'll, I'll just give it a watch. If you've seen the first Omen, that is a better version of Immaculate. Even Sydney Sweeney could not save it. It was Ooh. good. It was enjoyable. It was not. Very Wait, were you good. saying that it, there's steamy scenes in an immaculate? No, 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 no. The, well, hmm, there's a couple of um, scenes that are not nothing shown, but it's a bunch of nuns wearing linen in a bath <laughs> and nothing else. So <laughs> it's there's transparency there. Okay. And then Ooh, a bit of nun nips. Where, uh, yeah, there's there's some behind the linen nips. Nun and, nips. Um, and then there's a scene where she gets. Anyway, it's the film. She gets what? Sorry. She gets anyway. She gets, she gets stripped and she's holding. Bear me two seconds. What? It's getting my credit card. <laughs> it wasn't a bad film. It was good. It was good in the sense that I know the fact. That's his that's, car. That's the noise you'll be making as well. That's the noise you'll be making. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's difficult to say our film's not bad when it was kind of okay, but it wasn't. It, 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 it's the same plot, it, basically, as the, the first omen. She's a nun, and then you realise she's pregnant, but she's, you know, nothing, that's why it's called Immaculate, because it's the Immaculate Conception. Have you got a bit of a nun kink? No. You'll be watching Sister Act next week. I watched Sister Act this week already. <laughs> Kev's on in the nun kick. I'm on a horror kick. And when Kev's I'm on a nun kick. IMDb about Sister Act just to look where the actors are now. Sister Act Dead. 3's popped up, saying in production. I'll have what? some of that. I'll have a 70 year old Whoopi Goldberg. Oi, oi. No, she's all woke, so she'll be getting paid, but played by, like, I don't know, Kevin Costner or something. But. But honestly, yeah, Immaculate, it's worth watching if you're into that sort of stuff. It was good. It's some good little horror bits. But the first omen is leaps and bounds ahead of it. Drew, you are going to see the bike riders this week. Oh, I've already seen it, bud. (laughs) Just giving you evil looks. We need to go and see day one. That's the big one. So yeah, this week I'm going to see one. Bike Riders on Thursday so we can chat about it next week. And day one's the big blockbuster. It's well worth it though, man. I think, I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, don't I'm not going to sit on my own, am I? I have to wait now. What? Dude, you, but, Just mate, go on your you own. Go, I, I went, go on my own. I went go on my, on my own. own to the cinema. Mate, yeah, I, I went on, on my own. own. The guy even says, he's like, go to the cinema with friends or even better, on your own. Like he says No, it, I'm going to make a friend and then go. Yeah, make a friend. Just build one and then... I'm going to go Lego. on my like, Tinder right now. A Lego friend. I've actually got a Lego man right here, actually. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. He's gone. don't know where he's gone. Right, so should we do a cinema selection from two, three weeks ago? Ready? Ooh. I didn't even bother. What did we watch this week? <laughs> on Cinema Selection. Bad Boys, what's it called? Ride or Die? Ride or Bad Die. Bad Boys. Ride or Die. You know, can't be asked to lose the weight anymore. I tell right. you what, I was surprised actually because, yeah, the adverts are Martin Lawrence. So, yeah, Bad Boys, Ride or Die. In the advert, Martin Lawrence, we even took the piss out of him the other week with, with uh, Michael on the podcast, is that the scene where he zoomed into those hot dogs, his cheeks look, he looks like hamster, massive. Yeah. But during to be the fair, film, he's probably 50 something years old. But during the film, he doesn't actually look that big. He's just got a big no. face. His I hope they leave it fine. now. Oh, leave it now. 
I was surprised. His body looks flat. He looks fine. It's just, yeah, they need to just leave that alone and do something new. He's just got. A, well, no, they don't because it was brilliant. I loved it. It was. Just, I just want to see some new stuff. Everything's like Twisters or Bad Boys or Ghostbusters or everything's just rehashes. When was the last time a good yeah, but new no, movie I, came out? Yeah. Right, I agree with you, but taking that away for a second, because we're going to talk about Bad Boys for a few minutes, is the fact that Bad Boys is an amazing film. Like, it's a great franchise. I, I, in preparation for it a few weeks ago, I watched all three Bad Boys in one week. I loved every single one. Even Which three. one's your favourite? Mine's two. Uh, one. One is still Although I do like the chase scene in number one. Yeah, and that bit, you know, where he's driving the Porsche he's, it, through that gap, he's like, this car's fast. This the is thing a is, faster car. Bad Boys 1. And then they make it through, he goes, that's how you drive from now on. That's how bad, you drive. Bad Boys 1 is kind of realistic. Bad Boys 2, when they're, like, having machine gun wars with, like, Rastafarians in the thing and all that sort of stuff, it's like, oh, that's just ridiculous. That's when but... they step up the, the, the filming, you know, where he puts the gun like that against the bullet hole. Have you have you seen the meme that someone's done? Where have you seen, all seen Frozen, right? Yeah. That scene where the little girl puts her eye up to the door and someone's cut Mike Larry putting the gun. <laughs> and she, <laughs> she's like, "Do you want to build a snowman?" And you see him put the gun. She's like looking through the keyhole and you see the gun go up. So <laughs> but, like, what is wrong with people? But I was, I guess I was that's watching a, no. a little clip of um, Will Smith speak the other day, and he was talking about Michael Bay because prior to Bad Boys, he hadn't done. Big. When when was Independence Day? Because I'm sure Independence. 1996. Day... What is that? Michael Bay? No, no, no. 1995 no, no. or 1996. Big film that he was in. Oh. Um, I'm in going with the... 96. Pick right. your pick your numbers. Pick your pick your number, Drew. I'm saying it was after Bad Boys. It's 95. Bad Boys is 95. It's 95. It's 95. It's 96. Well done, James. Bad Boys was oh, 95. Son of he wouldn't me. have had two blockbusters in one year. Okay, well, so what he said. I expected him to be right, but I didn't think he was. Um, so, yeah, he said that this was his big film because prior to that, he'd just done comedies, Fresh Prince. He hadn't done the Bad Boys, Independence Day, uh, Men in Black blockbuster film. Well, Bad Boys was his breakout movie, wasn't it? Well, and that... you could also say Martin Lawrence's breakout movie. He was a stand-up no, comic. No, no, no. Before... Martin Lawrence was huge at that point. He was bigger than Will Smith. He was a stand-up comedian. That's what he was known for. Yeah, but he was in loads of comedy movies and stuff like that and sitcoms was and he... But he... Um, he... <laughs> Will Smith was talking on the chat show thing the other day about it, saying that he was chatting to Michael Bay, and he said, right, for this scene, Will, I want you to take your shirt off, and I'm going to film you running slow motion down the street. That's and cool. Will Smith went, nah, nah, it's too cheesy, man. I'm not going to... You know those films where someone walks through the church and doves fly in slow motion, and it, and he's talking yeah, for off. some unknown reason? It's so unrealistic. I'm not going to do that. And apparently they argued for ages about it, and Will Smith compromised and said, right, I'll undo my shirt, but I'm not taking it off. And it's that scene where he's run down the street and he saves... It's amazing when he's going to save him. Yeah, saves Martin Lawrence from getting run over. And he, when that, when he finished doing that run and it was the slow motion stand-up, that you know, the yeah. famous yeah. turning as they stand up, it's um, so cool. Michael Bay ran over to Will Smith and goes, I've just made you a movie star, boy. Wow. And Will Smith got shivers. He was like, hmm. The only things I can find Martin Lawrence did before 95 that aren't stand-up comedy are House Party. I watched a film with him the other day, uh, Do the Right Thing. And uh, Martin. I'm guessing that was a series, though, because it says 92 to 97. It just yeah, took him long in, to make the film. He was in. He was in Boomerang with um, Eddie Murphy. That's it. That's the only one, and um, that's not exactly like. He was in Do the Right Thing in '89. I watched that the other day. It was on BBC. But that's is, not like a well-known, a big movie. Yeah, it is. is. Like it most is people haven't black, heard of that. It is if you're in the black community. Do the right. Yeah, thing. Yeah, but in general, it's not like a. Spike most people. Right if you ask people, most people have they seen? I reckon. Eight, 98 out of 100 say no. Spike Lee. It's Spike Lee. Lee. So it doesn't count. But that's like saying you can't appreciate Elvis movies if you're black. 
No, it's not. I'm just saying you just said 99 people I would ask wouldn't know it. That's because 99%. But it's not a big film, is it? Bad Boys was it a is. breakout. It is. Do the Right Thing is a big film in the black community. Mate, it's like, Spike Lee as well. well. The fact you're adding in the black community means it's well, not it's a big Spike, film. It means half Spike, the earth didn't it's enjoy Spike it. Lee. It's a Spike Lee film. So yeah, Spike is, Lee's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big, yeah, I know he is, but I'm saying it's not like it's a, got, a blockbuster movie. I watched, the, movie. I watched the other day. It's got Gianco Esposito from um, Breaking Bad in it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's got John Tur Turio, the guy from John Transformers Turturro. and shit. The white guy, uh, Italian guy. And it's also got um, Samuel Jackson playing a DJ in it as well. But if you ask people if right. they've seen Bad Boys, most people say yes. Ask people yeah. who've seen that, that, most people are saying no. That's what defines your breakout movie, when most people have seen it. That's a fair point, though. Bad Boys is definitely a global sensation. That's what I was getting at. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I define a breakout movie. Not your first film that did well, like, but your first big one. Like for Jim Carrey, it was Ace Ventura, but he probably did stuff beforehand. Yeah, and then a double, a, double quick, people saw. a double quick one is Tom Hardy. So obviously there was Bronson, but that was still an arty film, so not a lot of people knew that. So it was but he was, he was in, But he was in Layer Cake. Yeah, big no, film, I know. Very small. But he's very not, small. It wasn't his breakout movie, yeah. No, but I'm saying Inception was his breakout movie, because when he played Eames, that put him on the map in a major way. Yeah. Bronson's a massive film, but yeah. it's not his... I don't, mm, it's, art, it's just one of those niche films, isn't it? It's art house, so not a lot. Nicholas Windham Reffin again, by the way, to bring him up. Again. Yeah, but but look, look if you, again, what you're saying here, if you said Bronson, I wonder what the percentage of people that have seen that film is. But as soon as you say Inception, people are like yeah. yeah. But to go, let's stick on Bad Boys for a minute because I yeah, just, we'll go back to Bad Boys. I just think that those films are yes, they're kind of a rehash of Beverly Hills, but. It's still done so well. It's got the well, right great amount action of movies. comedy with action. Mm -hmm. They're great Sunday afternoon movies. Yeah, it's fun. It's not just a serious action film, although it does go serious. That they're they're funny, but when it goes serious, it goes serious hard. You know, it's. I actually really like the storyline in number two. I'm trying to. I only watched that. Where his yeah, sister's remember. working undercover for like the drug mill and stuff. That's it, remember. yeah. And then they go to be like... Um, they go and invade Puerto Rico or whatever. Yeah, they go or as... Re um, Colum or, um, what's it called? We, um, Cuba. You know, when we were talking very briefly, this is still connected to, to Bad Boys, so you know Pulp Fiction, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he's got that famous scene with um, Jules and Vincent in the car and they're just chatting shit, but it's so entertaining because they're talking about... the Burgers. The, the, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and these guys, yeah. Yeah, and but but interestingly, Quentin Tarantino in an interview because I I started watching loads of interviews with Quentin Tarantino after watching Pulp Fiction because it's mind blowing. It changed it changed like film history that that film. Anyway, um, in Bad Boys, I believe there's a bit where two of the gangster characters are talking just random stuff and potentially food related, and they're in the they're in the car at the very intro of Bad Boys before they both um, interject. And even the, the 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 dialogue between Will Smith and uh, Martin when, Lawrence. When he drops that chip. <laughs> yeah, but when he's like, yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. When he's like, when they're driving in the Porsche, he's like, don't drop that food on the floor and all this stuff. It has got a very Tarantino-esque. And then when they're like, get out of the car. And he's like, why do I always have to get the big the big guy? You know, and it's like, you, you want to swap? And it's like. <laughs> it's I will say one thing about Tarantino. I probably said it in an earlier episode, but new people listen, so new people can hear it. If you want to watch something good about him, watch the Joe Rogan Experience episode with him, because there's a really funny bit in it where they bring up Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when Bruce Lee is made to look like a bit of a twat, right? And um, and he's like, so what? There's obviously a bit of controversy where you make, you know, the way you portray Bruce Lee and that. And he's like, and Quentin Tarantino is like, if his one of his family members had a problem with that, I'd be like, do you not fair dues? He said, everyone else go suck a dick. He's like, he goes like a dick. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm well, going to do what I want. Wow. fed up of questions because people question him so often about the use of the N-word and use of his violence and stuff like that. And it's just like... It's a brilliant it's a podcast. Movie. You should listen to it's it. But they both over bounce it. off each other really well. No, I've, I've seen I've seen that. I've, I've watched everything with Tarantino, every interview. Yeah, it's great. I'm not even that bothered about Joe Rogan, but I've watched it because Tarantino's on it for yeah. like three hours. You don't normally see him do an interview, do you? So it's like quite interesting. Yeah, because so. he's fed up with the same bullshit questions that but the no one can ask anything unique to him. It's the, ridiculous. The, reason, 
the reason I mentioned it is because it's almost like Tarantino quoted the intro to Bad Boys. That's why. So going back to Bad Boys, that's, I see, that's I see what, what I mean. I mean a little bit, but I think Tarantino's conversations are almost not part of the plot. That that they oh, yeah, help, no, of course they're not. They help drive the conversation and the background of the individuals to make them more interesting. But it doesn't. They make them more the, human, though. Yeah, but it doesn't drive the plot forward. Whereas yeah. Bad Boys, it does because yeah. Don't drop a chip. That's me saying I've got a posh car. I've worked hard for it, or it's mine. Yeah. Don't mess it up. That's yeah. whole gag. He didn't work hard for it, did he? he got no, given yeah, to him. He's got a trust fund, but he's you know, but he's got he's he's cl- he's a clean freak and he's posh. That's basically yeah. What I'm saying. yeah. And when they get out of the car, they're just, they're making the point is that their argument is part of their attack. Yeah, no, it's clever. It's part because they're yeah, not. I think there's a lot of films. They're not so... genuinely arguing. They're having it an is... argument, so the guys get pissed off with them, and then they attack yeah. them. It's very lethal weapon though, as well, because um, yeah. oh man, what were the characters? Because they they used to come up Riggs with Riggs and um Mur- Murdoch. Murdoch. Riggs. Yeah. And... No. Is it Murdoch? No, it's not. Is it Riggs, Riggs and, Mortimer? and not Mortimer? <laughs> Riggs and Murtaugh. No. Agent Murtaugh? Yes, Roger Murtaugh. Boom. Yes, yeah, James. Yeah. Ten points. There's a lot of films that I think give respectful nods to other films. And then there's some films that just blatantly rip other films off. Yeah. yeah. So and I think I, I probably Harry said it before, but the greatest ripoff of all time that no one noticed was The Fast and the Furious. That is a carbon copy of another film. Oh, I remember you saying this. Yeah. It's, it's exactly the same film as Point Break. Like to the script as in like the undercover cop infiltrates a gang falls in love with the female of the gang and at the end of the film lets the main guy get away it's the same script wow and anthony kiedis is it (laughs) i watched a um, netflix documentary the other day about great movie by the way point break a um a bank robber it's called how to be a bank robber or something on netflix like what? an educational thing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, we take a note. it's it, well, it's a documentary about this guy who lived in the woods. He built a a massive treehouse, like a massive, bigger than my house treehouse. Um, and um, he, no one knew where he got his money from because he was just a guy in the woods. Um, but they just assumed his parents had money and stuff. But what he would do is he robbed a bank once, and then he went back and kept doing it. He put a fake mask on it. And when he did it once or twice, and then the film Point Break came out and made it made him become a hero. So everyone started yeah. calling this bank robber that the cops knew but didn't have a name for. They started calling him Hollywood. So he would go out robbing banks and he would do, I think what they do in Point Break, if I remember right, he would rob two or three in one day. Yeah. along the same street because n- no one think you would be stupid enough to do one next door. So yeah. while the cops are there, he was robbing another one. Well, so- we need to give a shout out to one of Hollywood greats, by the way, Gary Busey. <laughs> that guy's a madman, isn't he? And- oh, yeah. That, yeah he's Didn't he play the cop? Cool. Yeah, he does. He's I mean, He was in Big Brother and was he's just a mental guy, isn't he? But this guy would actually genuinely rob all these banks and then, then the film Heat came out and that's where the, Great rob- film. the robbers get literally blown away and there's shootouts in the street and that's he got caught pretty much straight after that because he went for a big bang and there was a shootout and yeah it, it, well you know that also point break and heat off the back of point break and heat that inspired christopher nolan for the intro to the dark knight oh yeah yeah it's massively that's... inspired by heat because he said that don't they you want wish to be very and and they're going to be making a sequel to Heat as well, apparently. Yeah, I heard about that. And I can't remember. Someone said who was going to be in it, and I can't. Oh, there's remember. a big there's a big actor in it. There's a few big actors in that. Oh shit! They better put the <coughs> Austin. I was about to say they're going to put Austin Butler in it, and they fucking have. I've just I've just googled it. Heat that's, that, Glenn, I, think, I think that's the really Austin big name. Austin Butler and Glenn Powell and everything. Same Austin with Sidney Butler Sweeney and um and Adam Driver. Austin Butler, yeah, Adam Driver. Lot. Yeah, he, Sydney Sweeney and um. Who's the other girl that's in everything at the moment? Mate, there's loads. Um, Mate, how no, could it be, though, if De Niro... Sydney Sweeney and Anya Taylor-Joy on the female side are taking over, and so's Glenn Powell and um, Austin Butler. 
but they're different in everything people. Glenn moment. Powell cannot do what Austin Butler does and vice versa. They're both vice very versa, handsome yeah. chaps, but Austin Butler is on the serious level and Glenn yeah, Powell is on the well, comedy yeah. action. So if I'm very... honest, I think Austin Butler, and a few people have been saying this, he's going the Jimmy Dean way. He's yeah. very he's got he's got such a magnitude and transformation to he's his got, characters. He's got charisma doing nothing. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas Glenn yeah. Powell, yeah, excellent, just, excellent. Well, actually, answer. just Glenn briefly, just, just, just to say very briefly, because obviously I know we're going to talk about this next next week or whatever. But in Bike Riders, just to say, he doesn't actually have as much screen time as you think, but he doesn't need it I to don't be memorable. Tell me anymore. Yeah. Um, the only thing I knew about bike riders is that I didn't want to listen to anything about it, but I heard an interview, not with them, but with a director and yeah. they've got loads of footage. Cause these are, this is a real gang. These are real. People. Oh yeah. 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 And yeah. Um, Jodie Comer, apparently ne- like when you watch the trailer, you think Tom Hardy's got a weird squeaky accent. Like what is he doing? You think Jodie, Jodie Comer is a master of it accents but I yeah she's a, did, she's a chameleon i did not like her accent in the trailer for this it sounded forced that's only because you only hear like 10 seconds yeah her. But, yeah but he was saying in the trailer goes when you hear the real people and you hear jodie comer and you hear the real guy and you hear tom, yeah. tom hardy they're indistinguishable so i was yeah. like fine i'll let that yeah. slide then I'll, I'll go with it but yeah he said austin butler had the hardest job because there's no little to no information on him Remember when yeah. he did Elvis and struggled to lose the accent? Well, his accent's in that vein anyway. He's from that yeah. neck of the woods, that Tennessee. It is very... Southern. Yeah, it's very similar to that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he had the accent for... But like he, he is years. very Jimmy, Jimmy Dean-esque. James looks freaking weird. What's going on, man? Just trying something new. Those other 3D things look... Look, wait, wait, is that Emmanuel in space? But the VR version. Yeah. The other the other one's the Oc- is that the Oculus or is that what is those ones? What are they called? James, you know James. You know I'm in a computer game, right? That Pardon? Fucking hell. Did you say you're in a computer game? You put I'm in a computer game. And here. You made one. No no no. I'm in a computer game. I play a few characters in a VR game called, Aug- What's it called? Em- Augmented Empire. Getting it. And and you could literally play it through the thing, and I voice a few characters. Nice, yeah. But Drew, anyway. So, what did you even? <laughs> what did you actually think of the new Bad Boys yourself? Yeah, yeah. Let's go back. Um, because I so, think you were mixed, weren't you? I yeah, I was definitely mixed. Like, um, I think that the the plot the plot annoys me in places because loads of things are kind of shoehorned in. And I don't believe the police would be stupid enough to believe half the shit that goes on. Yeah. Which is a major flaw for me. Well, you've got to give it a bit of a leeway for that. Yeah, but that's my point. Like, how how much... Mate, like, if, if you they're trained... You don't go, oh, those robots are not really that very much in no, the No, series. but that's different, though. The Transformers is a sci-fi. Bad Boys is supposed to be based in some kind of reality, right? The I, police wouldn't be that stupid to... You can be smarter with the plot. It just felt a little bit... I liked... i tell you what I loved about it, though. I loved the fact where... Can we talk about spoilers a little bit? Not plot-wise, no. You know, you know the thing that happens to Martin Lawrence's character where he finds spirituality? That's not a spoiler. Yeah, he gets bonked on the head and he... Well, he doesn't get bonked on the head. Oh, oh, he has a heart attack or something, doesn't he? Yeah, at the wedding. But, yeah. but I just, I mean, well, yeah, we kind That's of not really spoiler. It's got nothing to do with the. F- Is it the very beginning anyway? Yeah. Anyway, he almost has a near death experience. Let's call it that, right? Uh, but that bit on the roof is fucking hilarious. I I I laughed so loud in the cinema, and I was the only one when he's on the roof doing some wiggling stuff. That's that slow motion scene when they're shooting in the neon place where it's oh, like yeah, with the paintballing. All, all the bubble gums are popping down. Yeah, yeah the, or skittles. Yeah, the, the slow motion skittles. Yeah, yeah man. His mouth. That's it was amazing. Right. It was amazing. I, I like well because when they're getting shot up with the um the uh oh what the fuck are they called um. Lava lamps and all that stuff splashes on them, and it looks like a paintball thing. Yeah, it's yeah. so cool. Well, but... the, the only bit that annoyed me of the film is the first 15, 20 minutes. I thought the comedy element did not land. 
No, it was well. forced. It was a bit cheesy. It was, yeah. It was like day one they started filming and they should have done it was that eggy. End. It was really eggy. It was really bad. But after half an hour, the comedy clicked and it started yeah. working. But the first yeah. 20 minutes, I was like, but, oh, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. Yeah, it, it was cringe territory. It was really cringe. Yeah. But I thought I loved... Basically, I, I I thought Martin Lawrence's character had a more interesting arc, right? In the sense that because he felt invincible and he's trying to preach to Mike Lowry and he's like, and when he starts talking about you were a donkey and I treated you badly. <laughs> In a previous life. That was so good. He's like, no, 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 man, but it's my fault. You were a donkey and I abused you. And he's like, what? It's like, yeah. it's so good. I think that's what's good about it because it had that other element because it, it, it that's that's what James is saying. It's just the same thing again and again and again. But yeah. with this, it wasn't. It had that new element where Martin Lawrence was the brave one, and yeah, and 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 Mike La well Will Smith. He's having a panic attack. He was actually he yeah. That's because he actually was yeah. in love with someone and he yeah. had something to lose for the first time yes. ever. So the vulnerability. He was, he was more intrepid, uh, yeah. more concerned, where Martin Lawrence was a free spirit. Yeah. So they did yeah. a role reversal. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I, I liked, that kind of um, polarity between yeah. the characters. That it, was fascinating. They needed something along those lines to make it different from the others. And that's what why it worked, I think. And who who's the badass guy that takes on about 20 people at one point and they're watching in slow motion they're like, oh! Oh, the, the, the white geeky IT guy. Yeah, with the glasses. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was great in the previous one. He's the one that rugby. Tackled. Yeah, no, no, no. But I think it's. But what I mean is, what I love about it is they gave him more of an arc because, like, yeah. he oh, was a no, bit no, like no. you're. You're on about um, uh, Martin Lawrence's son-in-law, nephew. Yeah, son-in-law. Yeah. yeah, the what the, the guy that Reggie is it Reggie? Yeah, James is yeah. Number, number two when that little that 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 tall black kid comes to take out Martin Lawrence. Yeah, he's cooking chicken these days. Huh? He is cooking chicken. Yeah. He's cooking chicken. Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually a like funny moment. And that's, actually like, a like, <laughs> that's actually well, a line. That's actually a line. We're going to do the potato salad. Yeah, that's a line in it where he's like, "Can I, uh, can I cook my chicken on there?" And like, they've been mm. sat on for ages, and then go, "Actually, we should definitely." Oh, yeah, by the like, way, I was setting that thing up because I'm going to watch one of your movies in the cinema tonight in VR. What film? Um, maybe oh, Immaculate. Oh. <laughs> By the way, I could see everything that was going on when I had that on. No, I know. I could see I know. you all on that. Um, but yeah, last thing about Bad Boys was I love the bit where, well, James, you've actually literally gone just in case you are. Oh, wow, he fell. Oh, yeah, no, I tried to shut a um application, um, but it. So yeah, and Bad Boys. Clicks on it instead. I really loved is where Martin Lawrence is like, I, I, what, what's the phrase he says? I said, I need bad Mike. I need. I need bad oh, when Mike. he slaps him. Back. Yeah, he slaps him. He's like, come on, Mike. I need, yeah. I need bad Mike. Bad boys. Yeah. I, I do have a question. And, and, and he just goes, uh, uh, and you're like, because now this is the first action film since The Slap. That yeah. We now know that Will Smith is for real a badass. Uh, you know, yeah. Relevant to what you think. Can I throw that. something out there, though? Yeah. Why did they not get Martin Lawrence's sister back in number three and four? Like, she surely wasn't doing anything else because I've not seen her in anything since. Well, number, I think I've seen her in one three, other film, no, and I'm pretty sure DMX was in yeah, it. Yeah, but number, no. Number three was all about um, yeah. his family. About she was in a film with DMX. Oh, I'm not, I'm talking about bad boys. Um, so, number three was about family member. He was after, it was that woman that escaped who was witchy. And that's who Will Smith was. Yeah, with. yeah, but like the number two ended with them doing like a love story, and then it just like completely. It's yeah, one yeah, thing that bugs me in yeah. films and TV. No, they mention like, it. When they no, scrap a character. They mention it in Bad Boys Three. They do. I can't remember this. I'm like, what? What was she really doing? But I mean, what was Katie Holmes doing that meant she couldn't do The Dark Knight Rises? In, really? Stick on Bad Boys. She was in the DEA. She was trying to do a drug bust on the same pe people that that um, Will Smith and. Martin Lawrence. Yeah, but he spent a whole film building her up as this like character and then just pied her off. Yeah, I don't know why they did, but it's Bad like Boys... why did Katie Holmes not have the time for Batman? They got Maggie Gyllenhaal instead. You assume it's her fault. I'm pretty sure she got cast. I think out. she was pregnant though, dude. No, no, I think Katie Holmes was busy. I think no, that's genuinely giving... the reason. I think, I think she was giving birth though. What in silence? I think it's Tom Cruise's <laughs> fault. <laughs> 
It's Tom Cruise. You know, shorts, shorts aren't allowed to make noise science. during births. You know, I don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We listened it's Tom to Cruise's every day where you discussed it. We discussed that she wasn't in Dark Knight Rises. Um, do you, what I was going to say Guys. was, um, it, this sounds crazy, but it, is it me or is the person that plays Will Smith's son in number four just unbelievably charismatic? Like, I could watch that guy in anything. Will Smith's son? Yeah, the guy oh, that plays... Oh, the, he, the, the Spanish guy. Yeah, Mexican he's playing guy. his son in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's cool as anything. He's, he's so... A bad man. Well, he's the guy that obviously shoots him in number three and almost kills yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. But again, again, we talk about arcs. Like, he's a brilliant villain in number three, yeah. but I really cared for him in this, and he's got some really funny moments, like in the van. There's the bit where, you know, like before the van explodes or something, some stuff happens in the back. And he's like, this isn't a good idea. And then it's like, something happens. He's like, told you. <laughs> it's yeah. like, he's got some really and funny moments. He saves that young um, girl that, that the Yeah, man, hates. the redemption for him is brilliant. Just to throw this out there, Katie Holmes turned down the role to, to coast to star in Mad Money. Then she's mad. And I've looked at Mad Money, and Mad Money is a... It's a TV show that I've never heard of, but... It's five at five point two on IMDb, whereas Dark Knight Rises is like one of the best films ever made. So tough to say. Oh no, no, but it's Dark Knight though. It's Dark Knight. Okay, that Dark Knight's the big one, and that's the number. That's the best one, isn't it? The one that's yeah. voted the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. she said no. So that's do Mad Money. Well, she's mad. Go. She is actually mad. <laughs> but that did go on for twenty. That did go on for twenty seasons, starting from two thousand and five, and that was two thousand five was way before Dark Knight. Surely, I feel. Like it was a complication, like because obviously we're just speculating, but it was probably something to do with like contracts and stuff, and she wasn't able to get the time off. She probably would have loved to do it, mate. I'm sure because she was brilliant in 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 Batman Begins. The, the Dark Knight was 2008, so six years into that show. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like contracts are so entwined that she'd be like, "Can I just can I, can I go off for a few days to film The Dark Knight Rises?" Oh, sorry, The Dark Knight. And they'd be like, "Nah, we need you. Like you're one of the leads in such and such." Here's a question. Name one film she's done since then. Actually, name two films she did before that. I can't name two films. I can only films. name one. I can name a TV series. She was in Ray Donovan, season four or season five, and she was brilliant in that. She did a film called, was it called The Gift or something? And she basically just got her boobs out. And it was like, before that was Dawson's Creek, which was the most cringiest TV show of all time. Had like fifteen year olds with the vocabulary of like bloody scholar students. She was in Oceans <laughs> Eight, which was awful. I didn't even finish it. It was that bad. Was that the female one? Yeah, really bad. I didn't watch that. Can you remember she's Dawson's Creek? In... Like the words they used to come out with. It's like they were Shakespearean actors. It was so ridiculous, wasn't it? <laughs> she was in Logan Lucky. <laughs> oh, that's Logan Lucky. really good. That's meant to be good. Yeah, Adam yeah. Driver and um, Adam Driver, uh, Daniel Channing um, Tatum. Craig. Daniel I don't Craig. know why you just made me think of this, but something I really want to rewatch is Lucky Number Eleven. Yeah, brilliant film. Such an underrated movie. Brilliant. I can't help but feel that if these movies came out in the Netflix era, they'd be so much bigger than what they were. There's certain TV what? shows as well that I think would be absolutely. Can you imagine how big Spooks would have been if it was oh, like wow. a Netflix show? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Do you, That's do you one remember... of the greatest shows of all time? Do you remember? They used what... to be savage, just kill people, didn't they? Yeah, would you would you remember when one got banned because they used the um they used the oil fat? They oh put the God, that was Lisa face. Faulkner's character. That was that was the first episode yeah, of yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. entire thing, and she's like the main character. Yeah. and they poured a yeah. pan of chip oil over her head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like bloody like, hell. I'm just struggling with Katie Holmes. I've just looked through a whole discography, and I only recognise a couple. Not big. Um, disturbing behaviour. Remember that one? God, look how bad it looks like. Cruel Intentions. I remember watching that though, and it wasn't as good as I hoped it was going to be. I think that you was right. that hoping it would be good. It's got James um, Martin. Yeah, no, 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 I, just, I didn't see the poster. One I heard... No, uh... I didn't watch Spooks. Um, this other one as well she was in, which I remember really liking, if it comes up, is Go. Oh, that was great. And oh, JD's his messaging name? you. You know, the villain dude, uh, Timothy Oliphant, he's fucking brilliant, man. Yeah, so Kev, good. you should go back and watch Spooks. I've it's no, so no, good. That's about it. Even now, it stands up. It's got. Matthew I think Mc... it's on Netflix. Matthew McFarlane, Netflix show it? a lot of BBC stuff. Matthew McFarlane was in Spooks. Um... So many people. It was so dark. Yeah. No. Very good. Very good. Oh, the film I was thinking of her was um, called 
the, yeah, it was called The Gift. Yeah. That, it was like a sort of crimey like... murder sort of suspense Wait, film. is that the one was... with Joel, Joel Edgerton? I don't know. I, mean, it was, I watched it when it was on VHS. These are like... all like below par films. None of them are great. Right, right. Nothing great. Um, one thing, but not proper movie news, because it's anti-movie news, is that have you heard about the new Blade film? It keeps getting pushed back. Even yeah. Maharsha Ali's taking on a new film. Because I'm not happening. fussed by it, if I'm honest. Yeah, like, it sounds like Blade it's going to be good, but I think they're going into rewriting again and wait, wait, wait. casting again. Because what, What's happening with Maharsha Ali? Sorry? Maharsha Ali was meant to be playing Blade. Blade. Yeah. But yeah. he has now taken other jobs because they cannot get the script down and start filming ah. it. That is another word for saying the film's never going to happen Basically, because that's that, exactly the same storyline sure of all the Crow remakes for the last 10 years. I'm sure it will happen because it, it's, it's Blade. It's going to happen. It won't way. happen for at least five but years. This, uh, the, two directors have already left and some actors have already left the project. Did you not remember reading exactly the same news about the Crow remakes <laughs> over the last 15 years? Well, and again, they've, they, they've, they've stopped. They have all these actors in and they're like, oh, the actor didn't work out, the... The, the writing didn't work out and what 10 12 20 years later we finally got like a it blade won't happen again as simple as that it won't happen Can I just, in the next five to ten years i love mahashala ali right um but like you just said mate the first two blade films don't touch them for me they're, they're in the same class as like kind of like on the waterfront on all those things they're a classic in their own right don't touch them you don't it'd need be a to reboot completely it'd be a fresh oh movie. okay it's a new whole okay okay yeah because it's it's a blade but again leave it alone <laughs> like wesley snipes is blade in the same sense that robert downey jr is iron man i'm not as attached to blade as you guys for some reason i oh I, mate i love I like, the hell like, was blade this was one of the first was... marvel superhero movies no i get that but I don't. I enjoyed it, and I'm not saying it was bad. It was good. It just wasn't. It's not. Can, it's not the crow. It was. You know, it not, was very, very ahead of its time. It's a very good action film, ca cartoon action vampire oh, film. I, but it's not it, it, a classic classic. I don't know. Yeah, it I think goes it deeper is. for me. It goes deeper for me. Like his performance, man. Like what? It, of it, it put Marvel angry. on the map. No, no, but but Kev, there wouldn't be an Iron Man without a uh, Blade. Of course, there would have been. No. Yeah. Blade... I'll be honest with you, Drew. I didn't know Blade was Marvel back Same. in the day. No one does. It's only geeks right, right. and people these but, days. No one knew. No one's got a clue. Can I also it, say, it though... Was... Sorry. The, the writer, one of the writers of Blade is the one that came on board to write all of the, the Batman trilogy with uh, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he needed to have made Blade to make that possible. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I mean that the script is so good... From the kind of the the kind of cartoon kind of animation side of things, that Christopher Nolan knew that he needed to get that guy on. I think yeah. it's John something. Again, don't get me wrong. I'm not putting it down. I'm not saying it's not good. It is good. I just don't hold it in high esteem. Like I wish like they the, made a Blade Three back like in the nineties. The Crow, the, the the Dark Knight. Those are amazing action comic book films. I don't I, put. Blade I up think there. from from yeah, my yeah. point of view, of Blade. If you discount, this is going to be a bit harsh to say, but I'm going to discount the um, Christopher Reeves Superman films, right? They're there to one side. Apart from Michael Keaton Batman, there wasn't any superhero films in the early 90s. 95, the only other superhero film that came out, I want to say is Batman Forever, which wasn't great. Yeah, I can't think yeah. of anything back then. Well, even Superman the only thing good about Batman Forever Rangers. was that song "Kiss from a Rose" by Yeah Seal. Seal. Yeah, that but it wasn't even in the film. James, it wasn't even in the James, film. You don't even need to discount that because Superman wasn't even nineties. Yeah, okay. So get rid of Superman. It was really Blade and Batman. Yeah, so that's why I'm discounting it. There, what I was going to say was it was the first real superhero film apart from Batman. Yeah, yeah. Superman three was 1983 when I was born. So, yeah, that's yeah. why it was so new because you're like, oh, I haven't seen a superhero that, film. Like, there might have been things like Interview with the Vampire, but that I, was a very different tone. But, but I think I think it had a, it had a grit to it because of the martial arts element, right? The music, we, yeah. But and we all know that Wesley Snipes is so good at martial arts because of his whole host of his career of like um, where can I it, watch like, Drop Blade? Zone? Because I haven't seen it. Drop for Zone. Blocks. Let me try and I, change my opinion. Where can I so watch Blade? Say, Blade? Blade Two, I actually thought was better. So, ooh, that's bold. So you had Blade, 
you had Sorry, Blade zone. Three. There was a Blade Three, and it was awful with yeah, Ryan Reynolds. We don't talk about Blade Three. So you had a drop. You had Drop Zone. You had um, Demolition Man. Was you had all these amazing one? things where Wesley Snipes. And there's another. There's another podcaster, and I can't remember her name. And she literally recently watched um, True Crime. You know, with with um, Kevin Hart and Wesley Snipes, and she said the oh, yeah. exact same thing that I that I wanted to say. That where the hell is Wesley Snipes? Because he's so good. He is so Got missed in the film. Pass, yeah, he he's... is so missed in the film industry or <laughs> TV he doesn't industry. Doesn't need to make films anymore. But when late, he was um... three ninety nine on Prime, so ninety ninety eight. Yeah. When when Wesley Snipes in Demolition Man, and I can't think Simon Phoenix, like he looked just tough, didn't he? Oh, he was bad. When Val Kilmer was Batman, it wasn't very believable that he was hard. But that's really interesting because, yeah, because the guy from, yeah, the guy that uh, Wesley Snipes played in Demolition Man would kick Batman's ass. Simon Phoenix. Yeah, Simon Phoenix would kick Batman's ass. Also, very underrated film. Well, he would have kicked Demolition Al Kilmer's Batman's ass because I, I feel like some of the recent <laughs> Batmans would have. Do you know the stupid movie trivia about Demolition Man? Is you know every restaurant is Taco Bell? Oh! <gasps> Wait, Didn't can I just to... link this to the to the intro of this episode? Because his password yeah. is Teddy Bear. It is. And all the music is advert jingles, isn't it? Um, but do you know in the European release, and I didn't find this out until a few years ago, they superimposed Burger King, I think, or Pizza Hut over Taco Bell yeah. and do a really bad dubbing because Europe wasn't aware what Taco Bell was. I mean, Taco Bell's only been in this country for a couple of years now. Like... So, and if you watch the European cart, which I never saw, it's mm. like I think it's either like Burger King or Pizza Hut or something, and it's like all these restaurants are now Burger Burger King or like Pizza Hut. I can't remember which one it is. Whoever's got Google, open it up. Like the That's European crazy. cut of Demolition Man has a different restaurant. That's mental. Well, I'm just looking at um, Wesley Snipes, right? So for 20 years, Wesley Snipes did fucking nothing. Um, yeah, yeah, he went to prison. That's why. No, no, he did films. They're just terrible. Like for the for the the noughties in the the twenty tens. Oh, do you remember Murder at sixteen hundred? That was it. Well, that's, Murder that's at sixteen hundred. I was going to say is that the... was that with Jennifer Lopez? No, no. Oh, stop a second. Let me finish my train of thought, and you can jump We're in. We're getting once. excited. We love Wesley for those Snipes. twenty years. He's done a bunch of films that you've never heard of. Absolutely nothing. Blade Two in two thousand and two is the last one, and then True, yeah, True Crime. What is it? True Crime. Drew Crime. What's it called? Yeah, True <laughs> True Story. True Crime. True yeah, Story. Look, look at this. Look at this terrible CGI. Can't really see that that well. Oh, hang on, we can't. Oh yeah, Pizza Hut. Oh yeah, it's that's so. Pizza Hut, not Taco yeah. Bell, but it literally looks like someone's like cut and paste but a sticker on it. It's at, like that look bad. At Wesley CGI. Snipe in the nineties. He did U.S. Marshals. With um, yeah, Tommy Lee, Tommy Lee Jones, yeah, Tommy Lee Jones, the sequel to great film, um, the fugitive. Also, fugitive just, yeah. just throwing a bit of a circle around there. Tommy Lee Jones also in Batman Forever. We've got like you were saying, Drew, murder at six hundred, which is the address of the prime minister. Yeah, it's the president, president, and it's got um Diane Lane as well. Yeah, that was really good. The fan, which I think was underrated. <gasps> that was oh, really good. oh, is that the baseball Nero. one? The baseball one, wasn't it? Yeah, with De Niro. Yeah. Where, where he's a really good baseball player. Benicio Del Toro is already on the team and someone murders him, stabs him yeah. in the leg because he plays in yeah, got, the, Wesley yeah. Snipes' his number Robert and he wants him to be his number, don't he? you got yeah. John Louis, uh, Luigi Asmo, which we can, I can never freaking pronounce. Um, but you've also got Money Train we mentioned before. To what? Yeah. To Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, that drag queen one. Um, this is all right. the 90s. Drop Zone, which was really good as well. Yeah, yeah, Demolition yeah. Man, Sugar Hill. Passenger 57. Ooh. Uh, we're not even there yet. Uh, yeah, now, oh, yeah. now we are. Boiling Point. By the way, the fan, that's a good film. Boiling Point. And it is Passenger Benicio Del Toro, isn't it? Passenger 57, White Men Can't Jump. Brilliant. Jungle Fever. This is all in the 90s. New, not seen that. New Jack City. Um, oh, yeah. The King of New York. He was in so many good things, but you go to the a busy boy. and you talk about baseball, the fan. What's a better baseball film with, with him in it? Major League. Oh. Remember Major League, the comedy? Where he plays Willie, uh, Willie Mays Hayes? I don't remember. What's the baseball Why, film not... with um that... Kevin Costner, right. Will the Ghost? No, stick on this one. Stick on Wesley. Field of Dreams. Have you seen, ah, so seen this one? Major it'll, League. It'll come. Yeah, it's a good film. Yeah. Wesley Snipes has got Charlie one Sheen. serious catalogue. Charlie Sheen, man. 
Mate, I, I love Wesley Snipes, man. And a perfect example is when you guys told me to watch True Story. Story. Yeah. That's a perfect example. And everyone said it. Like, as soon as he comes on screen and he's he's just he's just so enigmatic and he's just so good. While we're on the subject of True Story, can I just throw another shout out to Kevin Hart for something I watched the other day? I can't think what it's called, but it's a film where him and his wife have a baby and his wife dies. And he's like looking after the baby, and he's going to like these these at these um mother and baby classes and that. He has like no idea what he's doing, but like it's not a comedy, but what's it called? He's fantastic in it. So if you ever think Kevin Hart can't, isn't a good actor, like that is, it's actually really sad to be fair. Well, in 1987, you all know it, but you might not know off the top of your head. What was Wesley Snipes in that made him? In what year? 1987. It was like his first thing. He'd done a couple of small things prior, but nothing. Was he in the Michael Jackson bad film? There we go. Boom. Bad, James, you're good at this, man. You're Check out the win. big brains on Brad. Um, there we go, Drew. It's called Fatherhood, by the way, with Kevin Hart. <laughs> Check out the big Yeah, if you want to watch a film... Bad. Oh my make god, I just sad. thought of an idea. This is this is probably sacrilege, right, in a crazy way. But if Samuel L. Jackson never got the part in Pulp Fiction for Jules, Wesley Snipes would have been sick. Yeah, because that, that's his MO, bringing people back from the obscurity then. Oh no, 90s, that, Drew. 90s he was flying high, so he'd never have got that. But yeah, Drew, watch yeah, yeah. Fatherhood with Kevin Hart. Fatherhood, it okay. is incredible basically it's about a guy and his what his wife dies he's got a tiny little baby and he's trying to like work out how to be a parent sort of thing but it's really sad okay but also really good as well like in a good way yeah right should we uh yeah um when we when we finish this <clears throat> does everyone i've not seen it yet does everyone want to quickly go onto IMDb or YouTube or whatever? YouTube. And at the very top, you'll have the trailer <gasps> for the new uh, Nosferatu vampire film. Ooh. The new Nosferatu? Yeah. No way. So let's, Isn't that what was... Let's end it. Wasn't that based Dracula. on Joker? The Joker was based no, on that. Wasn't Dracula. End this. Go watch it. I'll watch it as well because I haven't seen it. And then we can talk okay. about it. All right. See you in See you guys on Thursday. See you on Thursday. <laughs> This has been Rage Whale. Thanks for listening to Your Movie Podcast.